Hi, I'm Andre, and I'm a black nerd. Welcome back to my channel, and a special shout out to my subscribers, and of course my turtle fans, because it's time for another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episode recap, Turtle Power. As you can see, I am not in my usual black nerd HQ. I'm actually in a hotel room because I'm in Boston for NerdCon, Nerd Fighteria. <laughs> Don't forget to be awesome. <laughs> so that's what I'm here for. And I'm not wearing my glasses because I'm right in front of the window and so I'm getting a lot of glare when I put my glasses on. So I just said, fine, I'll go glassless. <laughs> Cause I gotta talk to you about these turtles. Even though I'm here at a convention, I had to make a video to talk about the season finale of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Cause I'm sure that's the only thing in entertainment that people are talking about this Monday morning after Oscar night is what happened in the season finale of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So in case you were thinking that Splinter was going to come back from his death from the last week's episode because he's come back before, uh, right at the beginning of the episode, they let you know, no, Splinter is dead. Here's his funeral. He's buried. Everyone has come out to pay their respects. He is gone. And the Turtles feel really sad about it, especially, of course, Leonardo. But in classic Ninja Turtles movie or just any uh, Star Wars movie, <laughs> Splinter's spirit comes back to speak to Leonardo and tell him that now he is the true leader and his brothers need him the most and to let him know that Super Shredder is still alive. So they go back to New York and they get all dark. They put on all black bandanas. They put on black makeup. Even Casey Jones like changes up his hockey mask so it looks a little bit darker and it kind of reminded me of the way that Casey Jones hockey mask looked in the actual Mirage comics. They found out how to get to the lair because they visited Karai. Karai was actually in the hospital from the last fight. Lying in bed, <coughs> Leo. Give Shredder a couple punches for me. I was like, oh man, Karai got messed up bad. For some reason, I don't know why, but when I saw Karai in the hospital bed, I kept thinking about that Fresh Prince of Bel Air episode when Will got shot and then Carlton came in <laughs> and had the gun and like he was gonna take justice in his own hands and Will was like, give me the gun, Carlton! Give me the gun! I don't know, that's why, for some reason, I thought about that when I saw Karai in bed, like Shinigami was gonna come in and Karai would be like, Shinigami, give me the gun! <laughs> give, give me the gun! You said you won't be! Give me the gun! <laughs> That didn't happen. But anyway, the turtles get in full dark outfits and go straight to Shredder's lair. They have to fight a bunch of foot bots and they come face to face with Fish Face. Uh, Fish Face, of course, using the advantage of being underwater to help him, but the turtles weren't going to allow that to happen because they're turtles. They can deal with being underwater too. And then Raphael fights Fish Face on land, knocks him out, and then you know the little like cords that are connected to Fish Face to basically help him to breathe while he's out of water and the mechanical legs that he has to help him to walk? Raph just took all that off. He rips off the legs, he rips off the tubes, and Fish Face is literally on the ground like, <gasps> Turtle, you will never be. <laughs> and I was like, whoa. They just seriously, Raph just seriously murdered Fish Face right now. He killed him. <laughs> there is no way. If Fish Face comes back in season five, I will be surprised. Because Razar last week got pushed down underwater by Leatherhead. And I was thinking like, oh, he came up right. And Razar is not in this episode. So I'm just going to assume that Razar is dead. And looking at this, I'm going to assume that Fish Face is dead too. I think we're just going to have Bebop and Rocksteady moving on forward along with Tiger Claw. But speaking of Bebop and Rocksteady, that's who they fight next. Bebop and Rocksteady have this weird like death trap dojo <laughs> where all these different like saw blades and knives and things keep coming out and trying to slice and dice the turtles of course the turtles take care of it knock it all out bebop and rock city are super scared and what does bebop say before he tries to run away from the turtles i'm out of five thousand i was like yeah this is the second time that Bebop has said I'm Audi 5000 on the show. This episode was written by Brandon Allman, who I have met a few times. So I'm going to assume that's a little bit of reference uh, to you know who. So thank you if that is the case, Brandon Allman. Uh, thank you very much for that. I really do appreciate that. Ninja Turtles always looking out for one of their number one fans right here. Uh, that's, that just, that's just awesome. That's just awesome that, I mean, I didn't create the phrase, I'm Audi 5000 came from a phrase that I used to say when I was a kid, but I'm Audi 5000 is <laughs> something I say obviously a lot in my videos, especially when I'm talking about the turtles, so they know of the videos obviously because I've hosted the, uh, the panels for turtles and, and do the recaps and stuff, so, so, 
I just, it's, I'm, I'm very, I'm humbled. It's very sweet. It's very nice uh, that they were do something like that. Turtles move on to Tiger Claw. Tiger Claw has this crazy lair. And what was the picture of the giant, like, cat woman behind it? Kind of had, like, a Chitara from Thundercats kind of look, but, but was, like, posing. I, I was like, all right, Tiger Claw, with your little uh, sexy bachelor pad. But, of course, Tiger Claw comes out. Now, you remember, Tiger Claw's hand got cut off by Alapex a couple episodes back. So, now he has... The mechanical hand. It's a cool hand too, because it's, it's like a mechanical. It's like Doctor Claw hand, and then he can take it off and put like different weapons on it. So he had like a laser ray he put on it. He had a blade that he put on it. So the turtles are fighting Tiger Claw. He gets him inside of this pit after he's fought with them for a while, where he has a pit of actual tiger. So it's Tiger Claw, <laughs> who is the owner of several tigers that he tries to use to defeat the turtles, but of course they are able to defeat him. April uses a lot of her psychic powers to help lift him out of the way from the tigers, you know, and they take Tiger Claw down. They don't kill him, <laughs> but, uh, but he, you know, he gets down and then it's all about Shredder. Shredder is on the rooftop of the building. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot one. Uh, Baxter Stockman. They meet up with Baxter Stockman, who's still a fly, and Donatello has a couple of bottles of retro mutagen, which they're going to use to try to turn Super Shredder back into Shredder, but Michelangelo, in the middle of a fight, grabs one of the retro mutagens, throws it at Baxter Stockman fly, and then he reverts back to classic Baxter Stockman, which uh, he was really upset about. He was like, I like being a fly. I was disgusting, but I was powerful. I was strong. Now I'm just a weak nerd again or whatever, and then Michelangelo just punches him in the face and just goes... You're welcome. <laughs> what can I say except you're welcome, dude? <laughs> you know? So uh, that was really fun. But did not tell him, of course, was upset because he's like, I need as much retro mutagen as I can have in order to change Super Shredder back. Now, fast forward to Super Shredder. They're fighting him on a rooftop. Yet again, another rooftop fight. But this one was intense. Like, all the turtles are fighting Super Shredder from various angles, trying to knock him down. They're just trying to get him to finally get down so they can put the retro mutagen on him. But of course, Super Shredder is not going down easy. He is just knocking him back and forth. But eventually, they do get him down. Donatello throws the retro mutagen on the Shredder, and it doesn't work. Super Shredder eventually knocks Donatello off of the top of the roof, knocks Raphael, knocks off Michelangelo, knocks off Casey Jones. April's already down there. So it's all left to Leonardo. Leonardo and Super Shredder going up for the final fight. Of course, Leonardo is using all of his energy and anger and fear because of his sadness for Splinter being gone, and he's fighting, and he's even yelling at Shredder like, you killed him! You killed your brother! You killed Amato Yoshi! How could you do that? And of course, Super Shredder's like, I don't care anymore about the rats, and I'll kill you as well. And I'm like, wow, I'll just talk about death and killing. 9 a.m. on a Sunday on Nickelodeon. <laughs> the Church of the Turtle. So Leonardo and Shredder are fighting. At one point, Super Shredder has Leonardo held up by his neck. He's like, I'm going to take you down, Turtle. This is your fate. And then Leonardo gives him a little, a little distraction. He's like, was this your fate? It turned into this weird demon thing. And Shredder kind of was like, no, actually, no. Oh, distraction. Bam. And then Leonardo and Super Shredder jump up in the air. You see just a bunch of white light and a slice. And then Super Shredder's just like, oh, and then just kind of fades into white. All the other turtles are worrying what's going on with Leonardo. And then Leonardo just walks out of the fire. I thought he had Shredder's head in his hand, but actually it was like the front face of his helmet or whatever. But he had it in his hand and dropped it to let them know that Shredder is no more. The Super Shredder is dead for now. <laughs> At least we think so. Uh, so yeah, he defeats Super Shredder. They all get back together. Karai's out of the hospital. They're hanging out the next day on the rooftop and they're just like, well, what's next? They're like, you know, Super Shredder's gone. Our biggest enemy is gone. What do we do? And they're like, well, you know, he's gone. But now that Super Shredder is out of power, you know other villains are going to try to step up and take control. Tiger Claw is still alive and still out there. So there's still more work to be done. But at least this chapter of our saga is closed. And they pay their respects to Master Splinter. They look up in the air. There's a big giant silhouette of Master Splinter his spirit in the air. And that ends the episode. And it's a very, very sweet ending. It feels like a type of ending where... If they wanted to do another season, they could, but if this ended up being the last season, this would have been a nice fitting ending to the show. They already know, they already showed a, a promo to let us know that season five is coming, and it's going to be called Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, so I feel like it's going to be a little bit more of like one-off stories or different types of mini arcs or something like that, some, some special stories about the turtles, as opposed to the season-long arcs that we've been getting in the past. But this was a nice end to this, uh, these last four seasons of Turtles right here, coming to this final battle 
you know, pay your respect to Splinter, defeating Shredder, all that good stuff. So really good job. Like I said, this is a fight heavy season finale, but I think it was what was needed, <laughs> you know, after we've had so many lingering episodes in space and so many side episodes with this and that, I think having a nice, just straightforward revenge and avenging for Master Splinter and finding all the different villains and having that final fight with Super Shredder was a great way to end this season. Good job. And I'm looking forward to seeing what these Tales of the TMNT are going to be. These like possible maybe like mini stories or just even just one-off episode adventures that the Turtles are going to have for this next season. Maybe they'll get like a different intro or something too along with it. I'll, I'll, I'll see what happens. I'm excited. I'll see what goes down. Well, thank you so much for listening to this recap of TMNT. What did you think of the final episode and what stories do you you hope that Tales from the TMNT Season 5 take place? What do you what do you hope that they uh, they do based on maybe turtle stories that you've heard from the original comics, from the 80s series, from the Archie comics, from the 2003 series? Are there any particular turtle stories you would love to see or characters you would love to see them use in Season 5? Thank you so much for watching. If you are a fan of Ninja Turtles, I highly recommend that you subscribe to my channel because there's a lot of turtle talk here. But if you just like what you saw, if you like the type of videos I make, please subscribe and also ring that bell because you will be notified when I post a new video, which is good because a lot of times I will read the comments right after I post a video. Thank you so much. I'm Audi 5000, right, Bebop? <laughs> I love you like a play cousin. I'm Audi 5000, Chain Chomp, yo.